Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. So this is going to be um, close to the end of this uh, series on the Classical Sicilian. Um, yeah, uh, I haven't made a video in a long time because, to be honest, I haven't been uh, reading up on the literature uh, of like more uh, things related to the Classical Sicilian. Um, I'm also starting to switch, uh, adding like the Taimanov and the Khan Sicilian to my repertoire and also learning some of the Karakan. So um, yeah, uh, maybe I'm just going to do another review on the Classical Sicilian as a whole and how practical I think it is. Uh, to play this um, like also in blitz games and stuff which I've been doing for many many months so anyways uh, today we're gonna be talking about the Sozin variation of the classical Sicilian um, yeah this is not gonna be complete uh, I don't uh, have the complete theoretical knowledge nor the experience to back it up but based on my research I think the lines that I give are pretty Pretty okay. I think they're definitely playable, and if you're okay with getting into sharp positions, um, then yeah, I think following this repertoire is completely fine. So uh, we just go into the main position after e4, c5, knight f3, d6, d4, c d4, knight d4, knight f6, knight c3, knight c6, and bishop c4. So in here, uh, there are yeah a few moves. Uh, I think knight a5 is a sideline, which is just uh, not good. Um, there's also the move e6 here, uh, and there's a problem with this that I uh, there's a reason why I don't recommend this, and we're gonna go look into the main move which is queen b6, uh, known as the um, Benko variation. Yeah, so yeah, um, we're just gonna first uh, refute knight a5, which is just a bad move. Uh, there's the move bishop b5, bishop d7, queen e2, e6, bishop b uh, bishop g5, bishop e7 castles and the a6 for example and then we can enter this um this position where we essentially have a weak pawn on d6 and after we play knight takes b3 a b3 um yeah white has complete development here we see the work on the open file very nice then i don't see three is also uh better than its counterpart on uh, d7 right now uh, the queen on e2 is also um, also is also off the back rank and prepares the rook to come into the game. F4 is coming, possibly F5 or uh, yeah, or those other ideas typical of the classical Sicilian. And so this is just like a better position for white. And so for that reason, I don't recommend knight e5 here. It may be a good surprise weapon, but if white chooses to play logical moves, I don't think uh, we can even hope for equality. And the next move is e6. Uh, the problem with this move is that this allows the Velimirovich attack. Um, so the Velimirovich attack uh, starts after bishop e3, uh, bishop e7, and queen e2. So this, this is the point. Not going for the English attack with queen d2, but queen e2 uh, covers the g4 square. Um, and this is going to be very dangerous uh, after we see the main line, which is a6, castles, castles. And here, uh, the main move is bishop e3. Uh, and there are two moves here. There's queen c7 and queen e8. So uh, both moves have uh, similar purposes. Uh, queen c7 prepares uh, b5 because it defends the knight on c6. But um, uh, uh, yeah, and it also gets off the d file, which is uh, influenced by the rook. Uh, but there's also another move here, which is queen e8. Uh, I'm just going to go over this briefly because I don't recommend this way of playing. But uh, the difference between queen c7 and queen e8. Uh, as explained by Ben Feingold in his uh, video on the Velimirovich, Velimirovich attack, uh, which I think is excellent if you want to just learn the basics of it, is that uh, this is similar to queen c7, uh, defending the knight on c6 and also preparing b5. But in some lines after pushing b4, like for example, if you uh, if we can imagine bishop d7 is already played and then we push b5 and then b4, um, Knight e4 is not an idea anymore because we can just snap that off and then with the influence of the queen on this diagonal and the bishop on this on d7 uh, it'll make it very hard for uh, white to play knight a4 or yeah take advantage of the a4 square uh, but uh, the problem with this is that there is rook g1 b5 and g4 so this is the start of it essentially um, this is playable um, uh, I'm not gonna say that it's refuted entirely, but this is like gives white all the fun essentially. Uh, for example, yeah, we can just follow this line, knight d5. You see, yeah, and this insane line here where it's just a race essentially, and 
yeah, there are like rookie eights, like one of the best moves apparently. I don't know for what reason. Don't ask me why. Um, and essentially, yeah, we can get into this crazy fight. If you want to go into this, you probably could, but I don't trust this position for black at all. So, anyways, um, we're just gonna go right into the main recommendation, which is the Benko variation after Queen B6. So we just want to play simple chess where, yeah, um, essentially we're avoiding the Velmer's, the dangerous Velmer Ridge attack, and um, hopefully we can just get a clean position into the middle game. Uh, the problem with this move is that it blocks the B pawn. So if you want to play A6 B5 in the future, it'll take one extra tempo. Um, to uh, get our queen off of uh, the b6 square, for example, with queen c7. Um, but the thing is that we're uh, the reason why this move is playable and it's uh, probably the best move is because uh, this is this immediately asks the knight on um, on d4 a question about where it wants to go. And there are many moves here um, uh, that have been played, and I've also faced many of them. For example, knight db5. Uh, there's also knight d2, which I don't think I've ever faced. Um, there's bishop e3 giving away the pawn, uh, and there are some very spicy lines in that variation. There's also the move knight takes c6, which is quite common. Um, and so, yeah, we're just gonna go. Um, and also, there's, yeah, I mean, the, the main move knight b3, which I think is the best. Um, so, we're just gonna go uh, one by one. Uh, knight d2. Um, this, the idea is that, uh, yeah, white just wants to. Uh, play the bishop e3 and then f4 f5 eventually um, once we play e6 to dull out this bishop which is a common idea and um, yeah so we can see the variation after e6 which is a typical move preventing all ideas of knight d5 and also blocking out this bishop on c4 castles bishop e7 bishop b3 a6 so um, we will see that in some variations uh, in the main line specifically we don't play a6 uh, for if yeah, for a specific reason, but in here I guess it's playable because uh, we just want to prepare b5 at some junction. And so bishop g5. Okay, there are many moves here. I mean, like queen d3 is possible. Um, preparing queen g3, and we can just castle here. Queen g3 and king h8. I think position is more or less fine. Like bishop g5, knight a5. We win the bishop, and there doesn't seem to be any problems um, here. Um, and also, yeah, something that I want to mention is that the queen on b6, bes uh, besides the fact that it uh, threatens the knight uh, before in this position, it threatens the knight, uh, yeah, on move 6, on d4, uh, but the problem is that it blocks the pawn on b7. Another thing to know is that uh, once white castles, f4 will not be immediately playable because uh, there will be a pin on the pawn on f2. And so that's like another additional nice thing to know. Um, so yeah, anyways, uh, let's just go into that. After bishop b3, a6, queen d3, castles, king g3, king h8, bishop g5 and knight a5, I think the position is more or less fine. Um, you can definitely do more research here, but I'm not going to make this overly complicated. And I don't think it's practical to um, analyze every single possible move, which is not going to appear in your games. The point is that we get rid of this bishop on b3, and um, we should be able to neutralize uh, white's, um, white's opening advantage, at least hopefully. That's what we're hoping for. And so uh, instead of queen d3, there's also bishop e3, queen c7, and knight g3 is, a, is an independent um, yeah, is an independent thing to know. Uh, there's also the move f4 here, which looks logical, but there's a problem that... Uh, this bishop on e3 is undefended, and so we can play the move knight g4, attacking the bishop, and if it goes to f2, we just snap it off. But queen d2, um, knight takes e3, queen takes e3, um, and b5 here. So black gets a lot of play in this position, I think. Um, yeah, but it's also quite dangerous, I have to admit, uh, that white has already f4 and e4 in. Possibly f5 is coming, or some other attacking move. Um, there's also an alternative here instead of uh, the immediate b5, we can play knight a5. Um, but to be honest, I'm not so sure if b5 or knight a5 is better um, in this position. Um, yeah, you can explore it for yourself, I think. Both seem to be playable, the computer seems to like both of them. 
And so uh, instead of f4, knight g3, uh, the idea is to cover uh, the, yeah, is to cover uh, the, g, the g4 square. So knight g4 is not possible. But here I like to move h5 and it seems to be quite playable for, uh, for black. I even like this position uh, that we haven't committed to castling and this rook on the h file can actually support this h pawn push. And yeah, so I like that. Um, instead of uh, bishop e3, there's also the move knight g3 immediately. Uh, and I like h5. So this, uh, again, this thematic idea comes where we delay castling. And if the knight is on g3, we can harass it with h5, h4, which is a typical idea in, in other openings as well. h3, h4, knight g2, knight a5 is a common idea, snapping off this bishop, I think. Um, king h1, queen c7, a4. So... Yeah, we're just following a game here by Veselin Topalov on the black side against uh, Georgiev, uh, Kirill Georgiev. Uh, after b6, bishop e3, bishop b7, queen d4. There's a uh, very nice pawn sack here um, with d5. After e d5, bishop c5 comes. Queen d3, knight takes b3, c b3. Bishop takes d5 is a nice move. Uh, knight takes d5, knight takes d5, bishop takes c5, queen takes c5, uh, rook a c1, queen e7, knight d4, queen f6, uh, which um, we, we reach an interesting position here. Um, it seems to be equal, uh, even in evaluation and uh, other aspects considered, uh, but I like this knight on d5 here. Uh, the queen on f6 is also quite useful. Uh, next, we can just simply castle, uh, get our king to safety, the h-pawn doesn't seem to be a weakness, at least for now. We just need to be careful about that. But it'll take many moves, for example, uh, for white to be able to uh, take advantage of that. And so I think we get enough play here. Um, yeah, and also I like this uh, the fact that white has structural weaknesses here. So this is a very interesting position. I think it's definitely playable. I, but I doubt you'll ever get this in a real game. Uh, it's just nice to know that these, this is the possible continuation that could happen. So we go back. Um, instead of knight g3, uh, there's also the king h1, preparing f4 or bishop e3 and then f4. And then also like the g1 square is uh, free for the bishop. So if knight g4 comes. Uh, and okay, this is an interesting position. I think the simplest is probably queen c7. Uh, preparing castles and b5 and bishop b7 and um i'm not wildly thrilled about the knight being on e2 <clears throat> excuse me um like i don't really see the purpose of the knight on e2 here and so if we should be able to compare this to uh the main lines and why this is like slightly inferior to it uh, but essentially the play is similar with b5 and bishop b7 and we play chess uh, instead of king h1, there's also bishop g5, which is played by Kasparov against Jan Timan in the uh, Manila 1992 Olympiad. Um, I don't think this is a very good line, um, but of course, I mean, back then, um, yeah, theory wasn't uh, as dense or as explored as it is now. Uh, after we play queen c7 here, knight g3, and b5. And so the idea that Kasparov chose was to play knight h5 here. Um, but I think, uh, uh, excuse me, sorry, I mean, uh, Kasparov in the game played king h1 here, and then eventually prepared knight h5. But uh, knight h5 immediately seems to be the best move. So the problem with king h1 is that it allows the move h5, and suddenly h4 comes, and it gets uh, very double-edged here. So the knight g3, we see that this is a common idea that we want to harass this knight with h5, h4. So there's a, there's a move like bishop f6 and g f6, uh, more research is needed here, but I think we can stop here uh, at this junction because it looks very pleasant for um, for yeah for black. I think knight takes h5 is probably just a bad move. Yeah, we can just play calmly with bishop b7, and it's a good position. Uh, instead of king h1, knight h5 is the the, the immediate knight h5 is possible, and we just take an h5, bishop b7, queen e7, queen h5. We just castle, and I don't think there are any problems here. Rook d1, bishop b7. Looks completely playable and fine here. The bishop b3, I'm not very thrilled. I think um, we're not gonna play knight a5 probably um, because it's being blocked out right now, but possibly knight e5 um, 
like bringing the rook to c8 and d8 or bringing the rook to c8 and giving the rook on f8 uh, to defend f7 it all looks playable so i'm gonna stop there and yeah bishop g5 is an interesting line but not uh to be concerned about um okay there are like other moves like a3 here which i think um it, it looks reasonable it prepares bishop a2 to just retreat the bishop um on this diagonal because normally the bishop retreats to this diagonal um in the sozen but a3 is interesting uh we just play a6 covering the b5 square and after bishop a2 um we just castle and there are there's so there's so many moves here i don't think it's practical to go over all of it but let's just say queen d3 uh, we just play queen c7 for rank b5, and we play chess. Uh, queen g3, king h8 looks completely fine and harmless. King h1, though, uh, we can play this move rook d8, which is really nice. Um, it was recommended by Alex Yermolinsky. It aims at a quick d5 break. And so, for example, we can see bishop e3, queen c7, f4, d5 is the idea. And after e5, I think, yeah, knight g4 seems to be a very thematic idea here. And possibly... Yeah, d4 was my suspicion. Uh, the point is that I think knight d4... Yeah, okay, I think we can play knight e3, right? Yeah, I mean, if bishop d4 or knight e3 wins, I think. Um, and queen g4, knight c2. Or knight f5, okay, seems to be more solid even. Yeah, okay. So I'm deserving these things also for myself for the first time, but... Yeah, it seems to be fine, I think. I like the knight on f5. So instead of bishop e3, let's see knight g3. Okay, uh, I mean, the fact that we've castled already means that we cannot push this h5, h4 idea. Um, and so after d5, which is the main idea, e d5, e d5, um, there are many moves here. Knight d5 isn't a good move because we just take and play bishop e6, c4, queen b5, and we can regain the spawn back with an excellent uh, position. We have more development, and I like this position. Uh, there's also the move knight h5, um, where we can play bishop e6, just bolstering the center. Knight f4, knight e5, knight e6, f e6, f4, knight, uh, yeah, knight e g4, uh, queen e2, preventing knight e3. Uh, queen e2, knight h6, and we seem to have a weakness on e6, but this looks fine, because after rook e1, rook e6, uh, rook d6 is possible, and... Um, yeah, this is untraveled territory, pretty much, but uh, with the queen on b6 possibly harassing b2, uh, the knight on c3 is not amazing, it can't go anywhere as of the meantime, um, and seems to be playable. Uh, I don't see anything wrong with this, as long as we don't blunder e6 pawn. So yeah, um, I think there's also a one more move here. Um, besides bishop a2, b4 looks very interesting. Um, white tries to uh, like gain space on the queen side and possibly their ideas of bishop b3 or bishop a2 now uh, but I think I found a nice solution here which is queen c7 a common move that uh, to x-ray the bishop also and so after bishop b3 we play b5 so I like this move a lot we fix the structure here and um, we prepare bishop b7 and essentially yeah I don't see anything wrong with this position uh, for example, we can see a concrete line after f4, castles, king h1, and a5. So this is the idea. Um, yeah, after a5, we try to get activity as soon as possible. And um, we just blast open the queen side, essentially. So uh, the critical line is after knight takes b5, but possibly bishop b2. Mm. a b4 looks completely playable here. Knight b5, queen b8, or queen b6. Yeah, I think we just take on d6 and take on e4 with knight f2 coming. So, for example, this. Or even rook d8. Did that trap the queen? Yeah. Rook d8 just traps the queen, actually. <laughs> Which is nice. Okay. So that's nice to know. Um... Yeah, so let's just go over the uh, critical line after knight takes b5. We sacrifice the pawn. 
uh, and I'm not so sure uh, the difference between queen b8, queen b6, and queen b7, but just for simplicity's sake, let's just play queen b6 here. And if knight takes d6 comes, I mean, this is similar to the other variation uh, after bishop d6, queen d6. Um, but I don't think, yeah, rook d8, there's queen c5. And so we play bishop a6 here, harassing the knight. And after queen d2, just returning the queen into safety, uh, we can play rook fd8, queen e1, knight takes e4. And I like this a lot. We already, we're already blasting open the queen side here. Uh, the pawn structure on a3, b4 is very vulnerable, and our pieces are all active here. Bishop a6, the knight on e4. Uh, I love everything about this position. Although there is this critical move f5 here. Um, yeah, but... Yeah, I recommend doing your own digging on that. The computer recommends a4, which I don't really understand. Do I understand it? No, not really. I kind of do, I guess. If you play bishop a4, uh, there's bishop e2. Right? Is that the idea? Okay, no, I don't understand chess, so there's 95 apparently. Uh, there's some lines here. I'm not so sure, so you should probably do your own digging on uh, that. Um, f96, bishop, bishop a6, queen e2, rook, a, rook of d8, and knight e4, and then f5, a4. Yeah, this looks very interesting. Um, but there's also the move queen d3 here. Uh, after a b4, bishop e3, uh, queen b8, a4, d5, e d5. So if e5 happens, then we can play knight e4. And there's a sack that's possible um, with queen d5 here attacking, uh, attacking both of the knights. Um, but apparently after bishop g4, Okay, not bishop g4. <laughs> Let's see. Okay, there are other moves like bishop f5 apparently. I'm guessing rook c8. Skipping the c2 pawn with queen d5. I guess a perpetual is possible here, but queen c4, rook c8, queen b3. And okay, I guess we can just keep harassing the queen here. Seems to be uh, very playable. Uh, yeah, so again, I apologize for not being completely prepared, but there are so many lines that I don't think you'll ever face. Uh, I'll just cover the main stuff, um, and I think that's going to be uh, quite useful for you, practically at least. Um, yeah, so that covers the B4 line, which is quite interesting. Essentially covers ninety two, which is that's a lot to cover for a sideline. Uh, another one is ninety b five, which um, we can get to similar uh, like shoving in type positions, uh, but the difference is that um, after a six, bishop e three and queen a five. So this is the main idea. Um, we avoid like typical Fisher Sozin. Um, uh, sorry, no, not Fisher Sozin. Sozin variation. Uh, like positions uh, like after knight e4 we can just play e6 and castles and bishop e7 essentially we play this position uh but instead of the queen being on c7 the queen is on a5 and i think this is quite uh fine for black um we avoid the typical uh, dangerous lines and so for example bishop e3 castles and we see we see standard main line uh position uh from the like the 70s for example uh, but this avoids completely avoids the Velomir Bridge attack, uh, as White has already castled queen side, uh, sorry king side, and so for example f4, bishop d7, very solid, f5, knight d4, bishop d4, e5, and so there are many. Um, I mean there there are many complications that could arise after this. For example, knight d5, we can just take on d5, bishop d5, rook b8, uh, rook a b8, queen h5, queen d8 is a nice move. And this seems to be very equal. Um, um, possibly bishop f6 is coming to neutralize his bishop, and there are no problems here for black. However, after um, here, uh, e, after e takes f5, the e takes f5 move is uh, very interesting. I think we can just play bishop c6 to activate it, uh, to activate our bishop, and 
this is one of the positions that I spend a lot of time on. Um, I analyze queen e1 a lot here. And there's also the move queen d3 here. So uh, we play rook a e8, which is a very interesting looking move. Uh, the point is that uh, we need to defend this f7 square. And so it may look odd that our rook is like covering our, our rook on e8 right now. It's like blocking out the rook on f8. But this is very important to uh, defend uh, our, yeah, defend the position and consolidate. After rook a d1, we play the move knight d7, which is an improvement over the games uh, that follow bishop d8. So bishop d8 is the move that Kramnik chose and also Boris Gulko chose. Uh, Kramnik being an, like an amazing theoretician and expert of the classical Sicilian uh, in his, I guess, earlier years, you could say. Um, but the problem here is that after king h1, which is played in these games, uh, knight d7, queen g3, bishop f6, and bishop d5. So I couldn't find equality here. Uh, I think that white has a lot of initiative in this position. Uh, Lee chess engine seems to say it's like zero zeros, but I think in a deeper depth, um, at a deeper depth, um, this position is very dangerous with a weakness on d6, and it's not quite clear how we can get out of this um, quickly. And so I'm just gonna stop the analysis there that, and say that uh, bishop d8 is not the best move. And so the move here is knight d7. So this is um, so the idea is just simply to play bishop f6 um, and um, sacrifice the d6 pawn. So this was introduced, I think, by Kramnik. Um, yeah, uh, against Nigel Short, um, and we can see after queen g3, we play bishop f6. So immediately sacrificing the d6 pawn here, and so that's like essentially the only critical line. I guess you could also take on f6 and take on d6. Uh, rook takes d6, but okay, queen c5 seems to win because knight h5 is coming. Yeah, okay, so that's a nice trick. Yeah, that's a deflection tactic, I guess. Um, okay, there's also, I guess, this one line with queen d6. I guessing, yeah, some interesting rook left, rook e5. I think we will see rook e5. Uh, also in another position. The idea is just to attack f5 here, and we should be able to uh, win back the pawn. And so um, the critical line that I want to discuss is queen takes d6. And um, after bishop takes d4, queen takes d4, knight f6. We can see that uh, with the knight on f6, this pawn on f5 is not uh, coming forward anymore, and uh, we've essentially neutralized white's initiative here. There's the move knight d5 here, uh, trying to get back the pawn, but after bishop takes d5, bishop b5, and rook d8, c4, queen takes a2, uh, rook f1, uh, white essentially gives back the pawn, uh, saying that they have a strong bishop on d5, uh, but this position doesn't seem to be uh, that dangerous for black. I think rook d7 with the idea of doubling up and or playing h6 to try to free up the king. Um, yeah, it's very reasonable here. Okay, you can do your own research on this position, but this looks completely playable. Instead of knight d5, there's also the move h3 here, which is chosen by um, yeah, Onishuk against Fiddler in 1996. And the move here is rook e5. So similar to the other position, uh, we're just trying to uh, gang up on this f5 pawn. And I think g4 is way too risky here. Yeah, um, it doesn't seem to be like losing on the spot, but Rook f8 seems to be sufficient to uh, gain advantage here. And so instead of uh, g4, which is very risky, and it exposes the white king, there's the move queen f2 here, uh, which is played in both games. Uh, we can see in the database. Uh, and so we can uh, play rook f8, and after rook f1, h5, preventing g4. And I think that we can eventually snag this pawn on f5, this is, seems to be a completely fun position. I think bishop d7 is a possible idea. I mean, at least in first glance, uh, if we want to add another attacker to the f5 pawn, we could. So this looks definitely playable. And that's against uh, queen d3. Uh, just remember this uh, uh, rook a e8, rook a d1, and then knight d7 idea, with the idea of sacrificing the d6 pawn and preparing bishop f6. 
Uh, there's also the move, this move queen e1, and here we again play rook a e8. So we need to again keep an eye on the uh, seven square, which is why we keep the rook on f on f8. And um, yeah, so we can continue after queen g3, which is the main idea. Now we play bishop d8. Uh, there's also this move knight h5, uh, which is the main uh, text move in the in game eight of. Um, Yermolinsky's book on the classical Sicilian um, and the line goes like queen f2, bishop f6, bishop b6, queen b4 okay I mean this is not what I'm recommending but still it's it's very interesting I guess queen b5, bishop f3 queen f5, yeah I just think that this is like it's playable but how much yeah like bishop d4 and how much are how practical is it to go over uh like to remember all of this up to move 33 so which is why i don't recommend i mean it's playable we could see at the line but um but yeah let's just stop there and let's just not go into this knight h5 move the move here that is uh which is the main idea of um of the setup uh which was chosen by kramnik also um, is the move bishop d8 and so queen d6 here is a mistake because of the incredible incredible move bishop b6 um, so this is like this is actually amazing like what I've uh, found here with the engine uh, the point is that bishop b6 is a blunder because after queen b6 rook f2 because obviously king h1 bishop g2 wins the queen on d6 and rook f2 Knight g4 just wins material, and so bishop b6 is a is a clear uh, blunder, and so queen f4 seems to defend it all, but we suddenly have to move knight e4, and it distracts uh, this, it blocks the connection of the queen uh, on the bishop on d4, and so knight takes e4 is a terrible blunder because you just we can just play bishop takes d4, and after knight f2 rook e4 is a nice move, queen g3 and rook e2, and so we're gonna double up, uh, we're gonna keep piling up pressure over here uh, and f6 seems to be like the best move here but let's just see rook ad1 bishop b6 f6 g6 and this is dead lost for white surprisingly um like h4 is one of the moves and like we can play queen h5 and there's also there's also an idea of rook takes f2 with the rook on d1 hanging um after c3 rook e4 it's like just amazing all this geometry this geometry is just, yeah, incredible. Instead of h4, there's also the move bishop c4. But we can just take on c2, bishop d3, rook b2. King h1, rook f8, queen h... Uh, yeah, queen h4 seems to be blunder here. Uh, it looks reasonable. But we have to move bishop takes f2. And the point is that queen h6 loses to bishop g2. And king takes g2. I mean, besides bishop e3 just winning the queen on the spot. There's just mate here. Um... So that's very nice. Um, yeah. And so instead of rook ad1, there's also f6 here. But we can just play g6 again. Queen h, yeah, queen h4. We can play queen f, queen e5. And this pawn on f6 is going to drop. I don't think we need to continue. Um, like king h1. Okay, I mean like, we can take on f6. We can take on f2. I mean, bishop f2 seems to be the cleanest. Yeah, because this one leads to mate, I think. Is there a bishop? No, there's queen e2. Okay. That seems to be very clean. Just winning on the spot. Me coming. And so knight takes e4 essentially is the blunder. Um, yeah, we've covered everything here. And so bishop takes b6 seems to be the only move. And after queen takes b6, and I think king h1 is the only move. I mean, uh, knight takes e3, bc3. We play rook e2, and we're attacking. We're going to gain a lot of initiative here in this line. Uh, so I don't see any other way to defend the g2 pawn besides rook g1 and after rook f8 uh, Let's just see. It's very hard. It's very easy for white to go wrong in this position For example, rook f1 is the terrible blunder because of the move queen takes g1 Look at this. It's a brilliant brilliant idea the point is that after uh, rook takes g1 rook takes g2 and there's a tactic of uh, rook takes g2 and rook e1 mate leading to mate and so bishop takes f7 is forced and we play king takes f7 
Quincy 4, um, this is not salvageable for white, but they can try to give a few checks. King f8, Quincy 5, um, King g8. Yeah, but the idea is to bring the queen back here. But eventually after rook e1 and queen g1 and we simplify in this position, this is a winning king and pawn endgame. It's so easy to see all of the weaknesses. I think we're just going to win this pawn immediately, actually. So this is very nice. Um, and instead of rook, a, rook a, f1, f6 is also another blunder. Because a bishop takes g2. The tactics just roll into this position. Uh, rook takes g2, rook e1. And so there's... If you take on e1 with the queen on b6 covering g1, it's just mate. Rook g1, just queen takes g1. And queen f1 is forced. And we can trade. We can do this and just play g6. We're completely winning here. The bishop on b3 is... Um, it's a terrible piece, and uh, our rock on e8 is great. Our queen on b6 is excellent. Also, there are so many structural weaknesses here. And okay, I think we can just stop there. Um, so yeah, this is a, just a brilliant uh, display of tactical, um, yeah, of like preparation with a lot of tactics. Okay, I mean, there's also I think rook d1 here, apparently, but. Bishop e4, queen d4, or rook d4, knight c3 seems to be more than okay. Yeah, I mean, probably knight c3 is a simple solution. Um, bc3 and like queen c3, or... I don't see anything wrong with it, but maybe rook e2 is stronger. Yeah, okay, just getting play on this rook f2. I think we can go for the immediate draw if we want to, uh, or more even if we want to play for the win. So yeah, I think that's excellent. Let me just promote this variation. Because this seems to be the best instead of those two. Bishop takes b6 and knight takes e4 on moves. Um, but essentially take on d6 is a, an error. And so there's the move king h1 here, stepping all uh, out of all of the um, tactics. And so we can play knight h5 here, still defending g7 against mate and harassing the queen. Queen g4, bishop f6 is a nice idea we neutralize the bishop on d4 and if they take on f6 we just take back with the knight with a great position and if rook a d1 then we take on d4 uh let's see rook takes d4 knight f6 let's just see his continuation possibly queen c5 and again we give up this pawn but there's a nice a nice move here queen takes f5 so always be aware of the tactics in this position of the hanging back rank um yeah and so here for example let's just see queen g3 there's also the move rook d2 here, but I think it's a blunder because of bishop b5. Knight takes b5 and rook, e, rook d8. No, knight e4. <laughs> Sorry about that. Queen f4 and we win. Yeah, we just win here. Up an exchange for nothing. Um, so just beware of rook d2 and bishop b5 um, because I think yeah, we're attacking this rook. And there's a problem with the back rank. I think here, yeah, there's probably some tactic here with knight g4. Or queen e1 is just mate. <laughs> Apologies. Yeah. So thank god there are there are live computer, there's live computer analysis. If not, I'd be messing up a lot of this. And so queen g3 is basically the only move, and we can just take on g3. Uh, I like the structural weaknesses, we can play against it. Um, there's a move for key five apparently, and there are other moves to be considered. So that one is quite nice uh, uh, against rook takes d4. Just remember playing knight f6. Uh, queen takes d4. Um, I think we can just play knight f6 here. And against this one, I, I think rook d8 or yes, yeah, something like knight g4 seems to be very strong, threatening so knight e3, and etc. So, that essentially covers, I think, the queen e1. Yeah, this, that essentially covers queen e1, which I've done a lot of research on uh, and spent a lot of time with engines on it. So, yeah. Um, so, I think we covered f4. Is there the move king h1 here? Yeah, I think this one is... I think this one is completely fine also. It's, like, harmless. We can just play queen c7 and... 
we're just gonna get our typical typical kind of play with b5 just remember don't play e5 here because we don't ever want to weaken the d5 square uh and so we can play b4 here knight e4 knight takes d4 uh rook b8 queen d4 uh, rook b8 uh fe6 bishop takes e6 knight b6 bishop takes b3 and against a b3 we just take on c2 and against cb3 we play queen b7 attacking the uh, e4 pawn and after rook a c1 rook f e8 the next move uh is just uh, going to be bishop d8 and we're going to kick out this knight on a b6 uh there's also problems with the pawn on e4 with the rook coming to put pressure on it also and so this looks like a very healthy position mm. so yeah just don't be too afraid of like f4 f5 um just know that in most of these positions if you're well prepared against it uh and you just play the typical thematic ideas and don't waste time you should be completely fine so yeah that's it uh i think we probably want to cover queen d2 mm. yeah we can just play bishop e7 if white wants to try to enter um sorry not the Velmer bridge attack i don't know why my annotations say that like the english attack essentially or yugoslav yeah, I mean, it should be Yugoslav with the bishop on c4. Um, then we can just play bishop e7, play this typically. I don't see any problems for for black here after castles. We're going to play queen c7, we're going to play b5. We got our typical attack here. Uh, a lot of counterplay with the queen on a5 as well. So yeah, um, that covers it. Um... This covers this bishop e3 move. Um, I think this knight, b, knight db5 move is covered essentially, yeah. Okay, so uh, we go on to the next move, which is bishop e3. Um, and here, this pawn sack just doesn't work essentially. That's what I want to say. After queen takes b2, uh, knight cb5 is a terrible move because we can play queen b4. Although I've faced this actually uh, twice against this one player. Yeah, who went into this line voluntarily and I won both games quite handily. After c3, queen takes c4, knight c7, king d7 is a nice move. And so the point is that we need to protect the c6 knight with the king. And so after knight c8, we play b6. And so we're winning here. We play bishop b7 next and we um, we successfully defend it. And so the problem with king d8 is what I've chosen in the game, in this tournament, is that I just realized after playing this that there's knight takes a8, uh, b6, and then the move queen b3. And note that the knight on uh, c6 is undefended. So for example, after queen b3, I think knight takes c6 is the intermezzo here. And after king d7, let's say, there's knight b8. And with this odd configuration of the knights, uh, white is just winning here. Up two pieces or something? Yeah, something crazy like that. Or full rook think and so we need to play this move king d7 not king d8 and yeah as as, as we saw before uh, we're completely winning in that line and so knight uh, cb5 is a mistake because the bishop on c4 hangs but there's also this move knight d5 we just take on d5 bishop d5 and queen c3 and uh the problem is that uh, this rook on a1 is hanging so queen d2 is not possible and bishop d2 is not possible because this knight on d4 is hanging and so after Let's say, okay, there's king f1 here. I mean, I don't think it changes much. King e2 is the best. After bishop d7, we just defend. We play e6. Um, uh, yeah, and here there's a problem, I think. I mean, bishop b3, we, I think we just play rook c8 or something. Something along those lines. Knight a5 seems to be very strong as well. Um, so play e6, knight, knight b5, queen a5, queen d2, queen d8, this nice maneuver. Bishop c6, bishop c6, knight takes a7, bishop e7, and we can get into this position uh, where we prepare d5, uh, and after c4, rook a6, we prepare, we prepare queen a8, and this position is very, very pleasant. For example, rook b7, we can play the move queen a8, which is nice, because uh, rook takes e7 would uh, fall into rook takes a2. So rook hb1 is possible, rook takes a2, uh, rook 1 to b2, rook takes b2, queen takes b2, and bishop f6. Uh, queen b3 and queen a1 getting a lot of activity and after the move rook b8 this excellent move g5 
just seals the deal, I think. Um, we cover the f4 square, preventing f4. We get some blue for our king here, and our king is completely safe on this, uh, on g7. And so we're also up a pawn here, which is nice. So let's just go back uh, to here. Instead of knight d5, there's also the move knight db5, which is the main um, point of this. Intending rook b1, which traps the queen. But there's one important detail why this, uh, why taking the pawn actually works, is that we can move the queen to b4, and obviously knight c7, I think king d7, or yeah, king d7 and b6, and like everything's hanging there, it's terrible. So bishop d3 is possible, and then we play queen a5, and we're just up upon here, we play a6 next, we're defending c7, we win, easy. Um, and against queen e2, we can play the move knight e5. Uh, this involves an incredible queen sack align if white decides to go for this. Um, there's also the move knight takes e4, which is recommended by Sam Shankland, um, but I don't trust that position to be very honest with you. I trust in this move knight e5, and after bishop d3, okay, there's, there are two moves. Uh, bishop d3, we play queen e5 again, and we play a6 next. We're up upon, we can win this game um, quite clinically. But against bishop b3, we play a6 again, um, and after, okay, there's this move bishop d2, and there's also this move knight c7, and we play the move king d8 after bishop d2. Okay, I mean, this enters the queen tack line, so there's this incredible move. I mean, the idea of bishop d2 is just, if we take on c7, there's going to be knight d5 check, winning the queen. But that's exactly what we go for. King takes c7, knight d5, knight takes d5, uh, bishop takes b4, knight takes b4, and if we look at the material count, uh, we have three pieces and a pawn for the queen, uh, which is typically enough, but uh, there are problems with this f7 square, but analysis seems to show that this is completely fine and just like better for uh, black actually. After f4, there's knight d7. Oops, uh, my computer isn't charging. I should probably charge that. Uh, okay, so anyways, uh, getting back to this line, as I mentioned, f7 is kind of weak, so f4 tries to make advantage of that, we, but we play the move knight d7 which allows the knight to come back to c6, so don't play knight c6, which runs into a3, I think, just trapping the knight. Um, and so we play knight d7, bishop takes f2, uh, bishop takes f7, knight c6, bishop d5, and g5, which is an incredible move. Uh, it undermines f4, and if we see here, before we play the move g5, we have massive problems with development. e6 is not possible, e5 just looks very weakening, uh, g6 and bishop g7 is possible, um, but the move, the incredible move here is g5. Um, preparing bishop g7 to gain a tempo and also undermining this f4 pawn. This f4 pawn is very strong and so if it comes to g5, we're not very concerned. And if g3 is, g3 is possible, but we just take an f4 and play bishop h6, uh, targeting this f4 pawn. And after queen g4, rook f8, uh, there are a couple of moves, queen h4, just take an f4 uh, with, the queen, with the king very exposed on, on e1. For example, rook f1, bishop e5, uh, takes on f8, knight takes f8, knight takes f8, castles, uh, bishop f6 is a nice move, uh, harassing the queen, uh, queen h6, and bishop e6, and this coordination is just beautiful. This, The rook defends the knight on f8, uh, the bishop uh, on e6 is defended by the knight on f8, um, and, okay, I mean, I think taking on e6 is possible and taking on h7, but... At the very least, like, yeah, I mean, there's rook h8 in this position. Just winning back the pawn on h2. It just looks uh, incredibly pleasant for, for black. If not outright winning, it probably is. But um, but besides queen h4, there's also the move rook f1. Uh, we play knight b4. Against bishop b3, you play rook takes f4. Bam. And this idea is that there's this x-ray here. So there's some tactics here after uh, rook takes f4, knight e5. Queen h4, and we take an f4. Black can't take back here because of knight, any of the knights of d3, and the tactics will work in our favor. So that's a very nice line. And so it shows the richness of this queen sacrifice, which I love so much. I don't think I've seen anyone recommend it, so I'm very happy to, to find this. Uh, I mean, with the help of engines, obviously. f6, g5 is the main move, and we play bishop g7, castles, and then knight d e5. And we're already threatening bishop g4. We want to play a5, a4, try to push the pawn to a3 to suffocate uh, the white king. 
and this looks just incredibly nice for nice for uh, nice for black so we're just gonna stop there um, and so I hope um, I hope some of you will get this in an actual game because this is just some exciting real exciting stuff uh, besides knight, knight c7 and then bishop d2, there's also the move bishop d2 here, which I tried to cover, but it seems to be just bad. Uh, I was confused why it was bad, um, but the simple answer is just we take the knight on b5, play queen c5, bishop b3, queen c6, bishop d5. I thought our queen was getting harassed here, but it seems to be clearly fine after queen d7, bishop b6, and f5. So, um... So I think this was also covered in Shanklin's course, but I've done some independent study here. And the move knight c7 here is harmless. After king f7, knight takes a8, we play queen e4, which is an important resource. The point is that knight c7 loses to queen b5. And we're going to take this bishop next. So for example, queen d2, queen takes b6, queen c3, g6. We're going to play bishop g7 next, and etc. For example, this line, we just win. I think f4 it's probably yeah it's just bishop g7 with a possible skewer here so that's not really relevant uh, but knight c7 is a mistake castling is the best move but it allows the queen to take on a8 um, and we're just better here essentially so uh, the next move instead of knight c7 is to move f4 which i think is more critical uh, we can play the move knight g6 attacking the f4 pawn after knight c7 king f7 knight takes a8 queen a4 again castles queen takes a8 we're just better here again um there's uh the bishop is going to come to d7 um there are some problems here for example i think queen d3 yeah it doesn't really attack anything so like i don't see any purpose to uh be scared of that e6 is possibly coming to free up the bishop and etc so that's a very nice line um as well tactics work in our favor um, and yeah, so I think that covers it, right? Bishop d3, queen a5 again. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that essentially covers this uh, bishop e3 move. Um, I think th this uh, video has gone for quite long enough. Um, so I'm going to cover, in the next video, I'm going to be covering the move knight takes c6 and the main move knight takes b uh, knight b3 here. Uh, just uh, for the sake of making this video series more digestible and making it more compact. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Uh, do leave your comments um, below. Um, one of the reasons why, I've, um, why I'm why i starting to make this video uh, or continuing this video series again is because I've been inspired by some uh, new people discovering my content. Uh, also uh, like commenting on some of the variations which I really enjoy reading. Uh, though sometimes uh, I can't reply to it because uh, of schoolwork and like it's uh, analyzing these things it's uh, quite a chore uh, sometimes so hope you can understand and um, yeah I think that's gonna be it for me uh, thank you everyone for watching stay safe and have fun playing chess bye bye